B-movie. I read a review a while back with Jerry Seinfeld on his new movie about the secret life of bees. In it, he stated that he put the lockdown on bee puns in the film, to which I gave a pleasant sigh of relief. In my opinion, puns are all very well and good, but using them too much enterprisingly destroys a story, especially, especially if it doesn't fit. I don't know what script Jerry Seinfeld thought he was reading, but it certainly wasn't one of the film I watched last night. The first 10 or 15 minutes are chock full of bee puns that couldn't seem to stop, including an unrelated one where Barry, voiced by Seinfeld, mutters to himself at the graduation ceremony, There's a lot of pomp here, under the circumstances. What? Fortunately, after a while, the puns seem to light up, but the movie itself never manages to take off from a quiet, hovering position. Barry B. Benson is a young bee who has just graduated from bee school and is ready to pick the job he will have for the rest of his life, accompanied by his good friend Adam Flayman, voiced congenially by Matthew Broderick. Upon realizing he will have the same job for the rest of his life, though, Barry s has second thoughts and manages to escape the hive along with a flying troop of pollinating and nectar-collecting bees, soon running into a heap of trouble as he breaks bee law and talks to humans. The movie's biggest problem is how much it can't get over the fact that it's a movie about bees. Every couple of minutes it makes some kind of self-conscious remark, as if it had to physically grab the eyelid and push it down to make a wink at the camera. If they wanted to know how to make an insect movie, they should have taken a cue from Ants and A Bug's Life, both amazing films that were unique and different in their own ways and managed to come up with compelling storylines that didn't constantly dwell on the fact that they were about ants. Neither of these movies really featured humans at all either, whereas B-Movie does, and though this could have been a successful attempt at being different, for the most part, it doesn't really work. There is zero sense of scale or grandeur, or even any real awe of the humans when the bees finally encounter them. Remember in Ants, where Z and Bala grabbed onto a shoelace and went zooming through the air? It was a spectacular shot, made all the more grand by the soar soaring music and slow, graceful movement. Nothing of that spectacular awe exists in B-Movie. The humans' reactions to a talking bee vary too widely as well, always contrived to fit the situation. When Vanessa, voiced predictably and unimpressively by Renee Zellweger, his boyfriend, Ken, voiced by Patrick Warburton in the film's most entertaining moments, which thankfully take full advantage of the film's innate ridiculous quality, especially when he yells, WHY DOES YOGURT NIGHT HAVE TO BE SO DIFFICULT? Anyway, when they first meet Barry, he freaks out and tries maniac maniacally to kill him, but the next time he meets him, he's just nonchalant about it. Later on in the film, when Barry becomes famous, some humans recognize him and treat him with unimpressed familiarity, while others flip out and faint in surprise that a bee is, that a bee is talking. One time, even before Barry is famous, a janitor duels with him with a pushpin, never once wondering why a bee is speaking to him. The script can't decide what kind of world it lives in. If the reactions among the different humans had varied even just a little less, the suspension of disbelief would have been much easier. As it is, it's just completely ludicrous. Sometimes I sat there in my think, thinking, wait, how did we get here? This makes no sense. The animation is very competent, but it's candy-coated, laid in textures of CGI sugar that steal any real life it may have had. All of the humans are plastic as though they are made, even though they are many different shapes, and it, but it can't hide the fact that they are essentially all the same. Vanessa is a supposedly adorable brunette, but she's so bubbly, perfect, and blah that I think I yawned every time she was on screen. Sometimes the animation has its moments, such as when Barry exits the hive. By then we have lived 10 or 15 minutes inside the hive where everything is dominated by the soft orange glow from the honey. So when we exit, the bright greens and purples assault us with their brilliance. This is the best moment of the film. Every, everything else is just normal and expected, even though it can be fun to look at. Another weakness of the film is its annoying cleverness with its trademark, trademark Seinfeldian twist, which is not, does not fit the tone of the movie at all. Except for one or two moments, the film is basically G-rated. How does this fit Jerry Seinfeld? Why didn't they make the movie PG-13? The tone of the film is too juvenile and kiddie to properly showcase Seinfeld. Other times, Seinfeld's bloated ego make it on screen, such as when Barry explains how he learned to speak. Mama, Dada, Honey, you pick it up. And also the pomp and circumstance quote mentioned earlier. Other spots of annoying cleverness include a segment where Barry discovers Ray Liotta Private Select Honey and guest stars on Larry King V Live, commenting on how in the human world they have a Larry King too. The Ray Liotta, bit, Ray Liotta bit is taken one step too far, and the Larry King section seems kind of out of place. Some spot on satire sneaks in here and there, though, thankfully, but some awfully bad moments as well, such as when Barry flies out of the hive, sees a box kite, and yells, Box kite! 
And when he sees flowers, he yells, Palau was. Um, can I ask why? Throughout this entire movie, I was torn between giving it a very poor rating and giving it a pretty generous rating. But upon leaving the film, I really could not find much to like about it. It was fun to watch occasionally, but there, seem, there seems to be some moments of inspired hilarity. But the main thought I had was this. This is what Jerry Seinfeld chose to make? This movie? Of all films to make, it had to be this one? There's literally nothing special about it at all, save for its sheer blandness. B-movie is solidly mediocre, not the kind of thing that many people will find themselves loathing, but not one which will find many devoted fans either. It never seems to know what to do with itself. The movie starts out with one plot, moves to another, then another, then another, and finally one was so outrageous I just sat there shaking my head. It feels like it was an hour and 50 minutes instead of an hour and 30. It also seems like the idea of this movie happened and then nobody bothered to expand on it till the last minute. The original trailers that featured live-action costumes and sets would have made a better film than this. It just feels like an incomplete idea from beginning to end, and if Seinfeld had not been involved in this production, you can bet it would have flopped. And for me, this is not enough for a good recommendation. I give B-Movie a 4 out of 10.